Hello and welcome to Amalta's Talks. Today I'll be going over a recent op-ed that I've authored for The Wire. It concerns my recusal from appearing on shows from which I am invited by channels, particularly Times Now and Republic. It sets out my perspective on a tweet that I made on Saturday, where I said that I don't appear on these channels because they advance a form of hate speech, which is targeting other Indian citizens. So I'll be reading out my op-ed here, but also giving some amount of perspective in terms of what's changed with regard to television news and what has led me to make these choices. Now, let me just first start with my early days as a television commentator, where I think I appeared for the first few times on NDTV's The Social Network, which had an anchor called Tashish Gupta. Now, given it was my first few times on national television, she suggested a straightforward approach to help me out. She said that apart, condense your statements into three concise points and each one should not last more than 60 seconds for one segment. Now, this structure has provided me a lot of clarity. It enables me to prioritize a lot of information. It's helped me over the years when I'm talking to a general audience, which does not know my area of work. And it helps me break down a very complex subject in small parts, package it and it essentially makes it understandable. Now, television panels, just through this one instance, I realized are largely shaped by the anchor and the show's format, as well as the channel, which actually provides that platform. And while I, like many, was there to fill in the sentences, the anchor plays a critical role in determining the topic, the debate title, as well as the framing. In later years, you can even notice much more intrusive aspects, such as time allocation, which is just so disproportionate in favor of one expert or one guest on these panel debates as opposed to others, or the audio levels being chased very, very drastically, which in which somebody who is criticizing the government, the audio levels drop on the anchor that they are criticizing, their audio levels drop so drastically. And for others, it's increased or it's a cacophony in which all are speaking at the same time, making it completely unintelligible, but yet at the same time entertaining you. Now, this is not a broadcast which is should be aimed towards entertainment. It can have elements of it, given that it should not be dull and dry. There is a way to engage people, but I think it should carry forward the objective of journalism, which is to uncover the truth, which is to speak truth to power. And here, I think so, journalists quite often carry an opinion. They come from a space in which they are engaging constantly on matters which are political, uh, financial, even sports. And it's very natural from them to support one team or dislike another, or support one party or dislike another. However, they need to limit this bias while also disclosing it by tempering it with a sense of scientific inquiry to uncover the truth, owning up to that bias. The bias will always be there. Now, in an ideal scenario, panel debates would then feature clear opposing positions with the anchor moderating rationally, irrespective of where their own bias sits, while it does show. And you may say that apart, this sounds like such a fantasy. Media entities in India have historically always served power and profit, corporates and the government. This kind of situation, scenario has never existed itself. Now, press censorship has also been there and has been a stark reality. Now, how do you juxtapose all of this understanding of where the media has always been with what you want? Now, my response to that would be three questions. Should we abandon our pursuit of an ideal and engage in a race to the bottom? As an expert, what is our role? As a panelist, what is our role? And finally, why today is different than it was before? And this is again based on my perspective. It is shaped by my work on technology, society and the digital rights sector, where more and more technology has made it a hot issue since 2012. I've been on several panel debates. Where while it's boosted my public recognition, what I've cherished most when I've gotten an opportunity is to explain technical nuances around topics like web censorship or mass surveillance to a broader audience to make it much more accessible to for people to actually understand why it matters to them as much as it does not seem like a very pressing concern in their daily lives. However, all through this period, I've observed a very, very concerning trend. And this is in fact evidenced by various analysis, including those which are published by News Laundry. It's particularly there and it has been visible since 2021, where we not only see what was there before, which was, for instance, a failure to meet journalistic standards or even a decline in it. It's opened and virulent bigotry against Muslims in India, as well as the support of the government in which all critics are shouted down and threats are created on their eyes. Now, faced with this reality, I made a very conscious decision to stop appearing on specific television channels starting with Times Now. And I never saw Republic as a platform for truth or journalism anyways, so I didn't feel compelled to make a similar announcement regarding them on Twitter. 
but for those who still do believe that republic is advancing news it's a form of presenting one side of the debate i just like to quote two studies there have been analysis which have been conducted by ashish sharma and sandeep kumar this is the first study and it says that although republic tv's debates haven't covered any pressing issues that affect society such as the economy education employment or health conditions instead they primarily focus on the core issue of politics which mostly attacks the opposition and any group or individuals opposing the ideology of the ruling government end of quote now just reflect on this quote has you seen a nighttime debate or a certain degree of prominence being given to to issues such as inflation to the number of colleges which have been opening or shutting down the unemployment situation in this country or the health conditions in terms of how are our hospitals doing these are things which affect your life on a daily basis but are they actually the topic of republic tv debates or it is instead hindu muslim or opposition this and government that just in terms of theme selection now the second study on republic is by ashwini ramesh who's crunched the numbers and her comparative assessment because she's compared different television channels holds that and again in quotes republic tv involves in media framing the most as compared to india today or indi tv 24/7 news channels conflict and anti journalistic objectivity frames are the most popular frames for prime time television news debates end of quote now it's not as if these choices are easy or certain or very very clean they do require a level of internal deliberation for experts to think about how they will participate and it may change over time now i'll just give you one instance from my own life even before 2021 i found myself in a similar situation regarding times now when it made some broadcasts which were attacking civil society activists and human rights defenders labeling them as anti nationals selective facts from their personal and professional lives were unveiled the text messages were actually showed accompanied by doctored videos and unfair characterizations creating public turmoil eroding trust and also enmity towards these human rights defenders Now tragically these broadcasts have resulted in real world harm ranging from criminal prosecutions to loss of livelihoods and the destruction of homes for many individuals a question which came to me was that should i continue participating in feed disuser's uh, show on mirror now where i was invited which i quite like for no fault of theirs given that mirror now and times now share the same parent entity now quite often you know these kind of decisions do pose a certain kind of internal moral conflict however i think this needs to be a deliberative choice when people who are appearing on these broadcasts think about it a little much more deeply beyond the pure availability of air time that they are getting the exposure they are getting it does become important for them to consider their role as a expert who is speaking on a issue to the members of the public while i can't recall the exact decision making process and i'm being completely forthright and honest here I opted instead to increase my contributions to national newspapers by shifting time away from TV debates itself. For some period of time I just stopped quick. Despite concerns now which people will raise about certain newspapers, again my choices are deliberative here. I take my stances assessing that the newspaper should not advance a majoritarian agenda. And while there are concerns which will always be there and there are plenty which I would for instance around neoliberalism and market-based interventions which are there in quite often uh, in these newspapers I do believe these are outlets for diversity. Here I continue to benefit from these platforms for the professional growth through increased visibility and the opportunity to publish commentary on a wide range of public issues. For this I do not have to be in complete political or moral agreement but here is the line I refuse to be an accessory to a media entity directing threat and hate speech to our fellow citizens and for instance this boundary has been clear for me where I have completely refused to participate in debates hosted by fans now now in recently on twitter which was i think on saturday i reiterated my stance since 2021 but it had one addition i believe that not only should more experts and panelists be deliberative in their choice of anchors and television platforms but they should also make it public transparency serves their own ethical obligations as a public expert it fosters greater accountability towards themselves and broadcasters and no this is signaling for solidarity this is not signaling for virtue for it comes with a cost it means foregoing air time opportunities that could lead to per- personal advancement as well as growing networks or even seeming as reasonable and balanced 
Well, the reasonability and the balance actually sits alongside a broadcast which is in support for authoritarian values. While such public declarations by me or by other experts will not be flawless, they aim to reduce inconsistencies between practices and statements and they will help build solidarity. Inevitably, private individuals will make exceptions. I will for some time fail. I will try to support a junior journalist or address an issue of strategic or emotional importance. But by and large, these kind of public statements will help others check me against any kind of undue compromise. I acknowledge that I am not the first to make this call. But I believe that more voices taking this step, repeatedly stating it in the public eye, is a meaningful contribution towards the restoration of any kind of constitutional sanity. I believe that collective action is required to fix broken news. Here, there's a joint responsibility which is shared by all members of society. The viewers, the broadcasters, the advertisers, the panelists and the experts. Thank you.